This is the Rocks Honours Award, where we honour someone within the industry who we feel is deserving of such an accolade for all that they have achieved over the decades. Now, the person who receives this award is the first recipient of the Rocks Honours Award. And what can I say about this gentleman? Well, comes from a small Yorkshire village, came to prominence by joining Deep Purple in the early 70s, then, after leaving Deep Purple, formed Whitesnake in the mid-70s, who then churned out hit album after hit album, followed by hit single after hit single throughout the 70s and the 80s. He also teamed up with Jimmy Page to perform and record in the early 90s. He hasn't stopped and has become a bit of a national treasure. The Rocks Honours Award this year goes to Sir David Coverdale. I've often felt doing this for coming up to 50 years that the rewards and awards that I've received have been amazing because that was never really something I got into it for that became a fortunate circumstance. And so it's always uh, an absolute pleasure to be appreciated and uh, and honored, you know, uh, and thank you so much. It's uh, an absolute treat. It's a and number one. It's a treat to meet you at last. Yeah, wow. Well, and you too, darling. I, I should, you know, <laughs> darling, my the inadvertent... I'm talking to myself here. I'm talking <laughs> to myself. What the hell? I was going to say the, my inadvertent impressions of you have, have spread far and wide over the internet. Now, every time you mention something, I always get tagged in. It's like, it's Wyatt talking to David. When you meet him, you must be David. Why don't you do David? <laughs> 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 So, He's got a big German security guard. That's why. <laughs> so, you know, let, let's see how this one is. Hi, this is David Coverdale of White Snake. I don't often go, but when I do, I go again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can do me whenever you wish, Danny. <laughs> so, th this one, <laughs> where are you from originally? Where, where, uh, London. Uh, London. Uh, you're, you're a southerner. I'd never buy a car off you. Now, well, well, to be fair, I'm the only southerner in the family. The rest are all from Yorkshire. So, and well, there you go, yeah. like a true gent, absolutely. So, of course, the next the Yorkshireman who wore a uh, flat, a cat, a cat flap, cat flap <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting look, yes, yes. So, of course, I spent my childhood being told by the older members of the family, Oh, you'll never play cricket for Yorkshire. Back in the day, you had to be from Yorkshire to play, that was, of course, yeah. yeah. And then when they realized they weren't winning much, it's like, No, we'll open the doors, anyone can play, Any, anyone is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. When I was, I was over touring one time and Middlesbrough was in the FA Cup or something and there wasn't an Englishman on the team. It was amazing. We were all like Czechoslovakian, Yugoslavian. What the f yeah. You know? yeah. But know, uh, yeah. slightly different when I was a lad. You know? Yeah, absolutely. But it's interesting. I'm, I'm in touch. I've got uh, Yorkshire Gold Tea, which uh, helps the Yorkshire uh, coalesce the vapors of incandescent thought and mix and and stuff so the american part of me is like when i sing as opposed to when i speak mm. yeah i find it fascinating that by coincidence because you're from saltburn but there's the village of coverdale is about 11 miles from saltburn yeah well when i joined <laughs> when, I, when i joined deep purple my mum said are you gonna buy that village now and I went, <laughs> <laughs> that was the height of like snobbery for her was you're gonna buy coverdale you know wow, and, uh, it's wow. supposed to be from what i was told supposed to came over with the 11th century uh, with the Norman invasion, uh, and and it was a title like Cover of the Dale, Protector of the Valley. That's the the long story of it, you know. And Bishop yeah. Miles Coverdale translated the King James Bible, you know. But no oh. loyalty stream, dude. You know there were some Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> well, now of course you're Sir David of Coverdale, so <laughs> but Von Coverdale, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Well, of course, this, this award honours your entire history. And to be clear, it's not an award for, say, the lyrics of Slide It In. <laughs> oh, stop. That was a concept album about oysters. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I, I really, you know, of course, when I was a young lad, you, you know, I was listening to things like Slow and Ease, and I thought, oh, it's about a drive. You know, I'm a child. And then, and then Take you, it easy, baby. <laughs> good Lord. <laughs> Blimey. Yeah. But I mean, you have you've survived in the sense that you, obviously you're still alive, which is a good start. But I mean, you survived grunge, you've survived music snobbery, and you're still here not just to tell a tale, but to you know to keep playing and performing. There's there's a lot to be said for that. Fifty plus years. 
Yeah, yeah. Just, um, well, it's very, I've been very passionate about what I do. Um, I try not to uh, let my audience down. We've got a really loyal, hardcore fan base around the world. Last year, we were supposed to do what was going to be my farewell tour, and it was sold out. It was amazing. Uh, of course, everything was canceled uh, to COVID. Um, so God willing, I'll be able to do it hopefully next year and show my appreciation, gratitude for the support that I've had, because you, you can't do without an audience supporting you. It's that yeah. simple, you know, and I do. They know the hardcore who follow me know I do my best at the best I can do at that time. And that's yeah. been my work uh, philosophy for, for as long as I can remember. But I'm, it's so weird now. I, I thought the perfect age for me to retire would have been 69. You know, I have a t-shirt. <laughs> saucy, darling, saucy. I know, devilishly <laughs> saucy. But uh, now it's going to be 69 plus one, God willing, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> but hopefully, you know, if, uh, if we're all sensible and, and come through this, it's looking very, very encouraging. And... Uh, yeah, I'm excited and, and very pleased to, to meet you and and, uh, and and receive this beauty queen sash, which is yeah. so generous for an, as a Yorkshireman with his Yorkshire gold tea. What better thing to celebrate with? Absolutely. Well, we are knocking together a, a trophy. It does look decent. We're knocking together a trophy. Yeah, to, to, yeah. <laughs> a bit of wood, yeah, and a flat cap. Like, I knew those CDT lessons are coming useful at some point. <laughs> <laughs> so there'll be something to actually wing its way over to you. You'll have a new doorstop. And also, I think you're worthy of this award because you've managed to remain friends with Glenn Hughes during the 10 years he can't remember. I spoke to him last month and he was saying lovely things about you. He goes, I, I can't remember you know, stuff around 1988, 89, 91. Oh, actually, my impression of you is better than my impression of Glenn. But it was like, so you did well there. You were friends. Yeah, uh, no, Glenn, <laughs> we're, the, we're the unrighteous brothers. Um, we, we've been there for each other, supporting each other when nobody else was, you know. Uh, the, the management of Deep Purple when I left, uh, and nobody told Glenn at that time. It was a really messy time. I didn't want to do the, the farewell or well, the last UK tour, but that was as a favor to, to the tour manager, stroke manager at the time, who was going, you don't, don't let me, don't, don't, or whatever. And it was just not Deep Purple. John Lord and Ian Pace were playing with their heads down. And the last show at Liverpool Empire, I left the stage and I left the band and I was asked to keep it quiet until John and Ian had decided what they wanted to do. Um, and Glenn didn't even know till we bumped into each other like six months later or whatever at Ian Pace's wedding. Right. Uh, and he goes, he goes in the bathroom, he comes in, he goes, you're not, you're, you're, you're leaving? You've left. I said, no, I've left. You know, you, but you can't, I've got, I've got all these ideas. And I said, well, I think we kind of blew it, you know. <laughs> but we remained really good friends and supporters. He's a beautiful boy, an amazing singer. Yeah, I call him Wilbur, breathtaking. You know, I hope he does great with the daisies. Um, and of course, the daisies are half a white snake, so you know, good luck. Yeah, to him. once a snake, etc. Once a uh, snake, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, and I saw on your theme as I came in, Michael was scrolling through your stuff. You had Jimmy in there to uh, speak with, who uh, Jimmy Page, of course, who I yeah. love. I saw Neil Murray, who uh, I just recently uh, emailed to. Uh, congratulate him, although it was uh, boosted by a, 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 a sad scenario. We had another number one over here with Here Go Again, uh, boosted, of course, by the, the, the tragic loss of uh, Tawny, you know, from all the videos. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and, and Bernie, I'm in touch with pretty much that's it. Glenn, Bernie, Neil, you know. Wait, not Adrian? I suppose it's Adrian V. Oh, no, Adrian, the old flying yeah. Dutchman, old Prince of Clogs. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. We were. Uh, He's, he's, got, he's building a, a, a windmill, I think, in France or something. So he has terrible internet things. So yeah. two weeks after uh, Tony's passing, I get this. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear about this. So there's a Dutch internet again. <laughs> Come on, son, catch up. You know. But, I remember uh, the first, first time I saw him, he, he was holding a guitar. Are you tall? Are you tall? About 6'2". So okay, so you're up there. He's 6'4", I think. No, he's more than that. But, he's, but this is the thing, when I first saw him... He wears years, lifts. He wears uh, lifts. Dutch lifts. <laughs> well, actually, I think it's Gouda. And he's got... That. Never, <laughs> never smell his feet. <laughs> so I remember thinking, he looks tall from far away. He's just getting bigger. Yeah. <laughs> he does look like a 
windmills. You know, when he do the Townsend stuff, it was yeah. wind blowing your hair from behind. It was, yeah. It's very funny. Sweet I mean, guy. And a yeah, great, uh, great partner, super writer. We wrote some. Uh, it's so interesting that we've got a new box set coming out in October. It's the 25th anniversary of an album called Restless Heart, which we've revisited, revamped and cleaned up and stuff. And it's a beautiful sounding record. Um, and just listening to his work again and remembering all of the experience we've had doing that. I think that was the last project we did together, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. No, no, Starkers. Well, Starkers and Restless Heart, yeah, yeah 97 or something. Yeah, no, you, um, you had the dark, yeah, you had the exactly. dark We wrote super, super songs together. Really super yeah. stuff. Well, it was good that you went back a few years, well, Asia went back and revisited Sailing Ships, because he always, he, he said to me, he said, Steve Vai, Steve Vai it, and yeah. said his mum never liked it, it was like a soulful ballad, and Sailing Ships is just a stunning piece of work. But Adrian says, but it's not how I envisaged it, so he revisited it, you know, and got you to do the, the rework yeah. six, seven years ago. I mean, that was the first vocal I think we did in, this is Hook City Studios, where we do all things Coverdale, Stroke, White Snake. Yeah. Um, and this is the first, I think the first vocal, we hadn't even finished building the studio. Yeah. Yeah. We had the guys who did the Skywalker Ranch do all the interiors and stuff. Oh, um, Ian Lucas, bang, <laughs> so, yeah, just the standing in front of the fireplace in a big TV, <laughs> you know, singing sailing ships for him. And I went, don't put the drums on, just leave it like it was acoustic, you know, but uh, he knows what he wants, you know. But I was all surprised to, to hear that he wrote it for his mother because I can't remember that at all. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, these these stories often come out after the facts so that give it a bit more mileage. They weren't there at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just another <laughs> tissue, Tito. No. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to Glenn, I mean, you took John Lord and Ian Pace into White Snow. How comes Glenn never came over for a, for a tour on out? We, well, Glenn had his own agenda, I think, in those days, and he still had a, an awful lot of experiences to, to have to get back to being Glenn Hughes, I think. Um, I was a huge fan of Huge Thrall, his first solo album. Mm. You know, he sends me all of his records. Um, I'm, I'm delighted he, he's working and doing, and, and hopefully doing so well with these guys. Super players, you know, I've had the days he's open for us a few times, a super band. Um, but the, <clears throat> I don't know, where, where, where was I? I forgot. I just ran out of tea. <laughs> Glenn hasn't joined your band. Oh, about Glenn joining. Oh, Glenn. Uh, no, there was never, you know, when I did the purple thing, that was after talking with John when he told me he'd been diagnosed uh, with pancreatic cancer. And he said, will you do something purple related with me, Davey? You know, once I kick this thing. And I went, I'm yours, John, whatever you want, you know. And of course, sadly, he didn't. Um, and I'd actually been listening to the, per to the uh, Burn, Stormbringer and Come Taste the Band and going, wow, I was so young, you know, this is, <laughs> I, I could hear what I would do now with more experience, you know, but, you know, it's still, still happening stuff all these years later. Um, but it never occurred to me to bring in a former member. I'd reconnected with Richie, you know, we kept it really quiet under the radar. Um, and it's, I thought that was going to be my last, you know, the last hurrah uh, to go out as I came in. I came in with, you know, the keys to the treasury with Deep Purple and, and go out with my tribute to Deep Purple. But it was not to be, Wyatt. Not, no, it wasn't. It was not to be. <laughs> it wasn't, it was the opening it of a whole wasn't. Another <laughs> chapter. <laughs> another <laughs> chapter. No Richie Blackmore, darling. Not this time. Um, yeah, I was going to say, it's easy to say this now because it hadn't happened yet. And, you know, there's quite a few bands and artists who are having their farewells for their own reasons. And that's fine. But yeah, for like 20 years, Wayne, come yeah, on. Yeah, the, the who, I, you know, the who started well, mine's, gonna be, mine's gonna be the farewell tour. Cause I'm knocking on 70s door. Are you kidding? I can't yeah. be Tarzan. It's hard yeah. enough now to get into me jeans. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna say, you're very open about your age and, and, and you're very open about who you are and where you are in life. Yes. You do. I mean, picture the scene if you can, 18 months from now. Farewell is another word for retirement, but what are you going to do? What's your plan? Oh, no, no, I'll be still involved with music. You know, we've got a relatively long-term deal with Warners. Um, we have a poop load of projects to do under the White Snake banner. It'll be, it's just the touring. It's not the performing so much that is exhausting, it's the, the touring. And I can't tour any more comfortably than I do.
You know, <laughs> so I spoke to my agent and I said, well, you, you know, I want to do this more than anything. It's after 50 years of, of incredible support for me not to be able to say thank you to the UK, not to be able to say thank you to Germany, to Japan, Brazil. You know, it would be heartbreaking. But you know, I'm getting up there, you know, yeah. for this kind of stuff. And so it's going to have to be a, um, an, easy, an easier tour schedule for me to be able to handle and recharge the batteries. So I'm not hobbling around or doing wheelies in a chair with, you know, fully upholstered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so there's always going to be, it's impossible for not for me not to, I play guitar every day. You know, I'm, uh, at the moment I start playing, you know, I come up with ideas for songs. It's impossible for me not to, it's like my hobby, yeah. you know, and yeah. it's something I'm supposed to do. Otherwise I think uh, I wouldn't receive all these amazing ideas for melodies and naughty lyrics, including Slide It In. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't think that, that would right. be too it's by, it's by Shakespeare, Albert Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking of traveling comfortably, I, I remember seeing this with my own eyes. If I hadn't, I, I'd have thought that couldn't have been real. And I remember laughing. It oh. was, this was probably an everyday occurrence for you at a festival. It was Rambling Man Fair when you headlined there about three years ago. That's right, Rambling Man. <laughs> Not <Yeah>. the Plowman's <laughs> Picnic, sorry. That's it, Rambling Man Fair. That's it. It's close to a Plowman's Picnic. And about 10 minutes before you went on, I thought there had been some kind of attack. I thought the president was coming. There was lots of running around screaming and shouting. There were fences closed. I thought, bloody hell, what's going on? And I, I walk around where all the porter cabins are, the backstage area. And there's you and your good lady wife, I presume, in a car that's doing about four miles. That's my, that was my assistant, sorry. Yeah, okay. Doing about four miles an hour, about 20 feet, while the band walked behind you. I thought, now that's royalty. <laughs> Over driven at that speed to the stage, and everything. Like I'm not getting my custom made John Barbados baseball shoes co covered in <laughs> mud. I'm so sorry. When uh, I spoke to, uh, oh, I was Dick Clement and Ian Lafrenet, they did a kind of a, a British spinal tap that's called Still Crazy, I think it was. Yes, yeah. Um, initially, they were channeling me on the thing, like getting out of a Rolls Royce at an open air festival and going, Am I supposed to walk across this? You know, <laughs> where the f is Sir Walter Raleigh when you need him? You know? <laughs> so I, I have to ask: Are you a character in the sense that when you're away from, say, me now, do you talk the same? Are you the same, or is it, you know, you know? There's no, I speak German. 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 Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's that's it. A Yorkshire accent. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, um, my wife, it's very funny because my wife's an American, we're together over 30 years, amazing, and, and, and COVID lockdown just made our relationship deeper and more profound, it's amazing. Um, but uh, often people will say, oh my God, you live with that voice? You live with that accent? And she goes, <laughs> oh yeah, the accent. <laughs> I wrote it <laughs> over 30 years. Quite enough, David, thank you so much, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, darling, as you were. It's so weird. I can sing like people, when people meet me, they're so familiar with my recorded voice. Yeah. Uh, you know, which is all influenced by American, African-American rock and blues and, you know, Little Richard, that abrasive kind of uh, coarse uh, projection uh, voice. And so that when I'm come on sounding like an English teacher on American radio, it's like, you're not him. <laughs> you <know? laughs> you're not him. I'm afraid so. <laughs> well, with, with the future projects you've got coming up, you, you reckon you might, you know, possibly be able to get Jimmy Page to wheel out some new material? Because it's like, all this curating's lovely, but yeah. give, give us some new stuff, Jimmy. It's been dec literally decades. No, I, un I understand the where he's coming from. Um, it's such a, uh, if somebody told me you can't do White Snake, you know, it, it would be terrible, tragic. And, and his baby is Zeppelin, you know? Yeah and he can't get the collective involved to, uh, to do it. So he blesses us with all this other stuff. And I've been talking to him recently about, I don't know, I've got a couple of ideas to present to him if he's up for it, but this was kind of the depth of COVID and he was in his country place. Uh, there's no, I said, let's go, let's do, I'll do the Coverdale mix of the Coverdale page album. You do the page mix, the fans will love it. You know, because it's going to be the 30th anniversary on, and, uh, and put the running order that you want, I'll put the running order I like. And, you know, because it always was a 50-50 project. Yeah. And he goes, yeah. I'm not going in the 
own studio, right? No, I said, I'm gay. He says, you've got your own studio. I don't, you know. But I, I said, there's plenty of time. So I'm hoping to sweet talk him into that. And if he's up for it, you know, I've written with uh, Doug Aldridge um, doing FaceTime, you know, yeah. iChat or whatever. And, uh, and that was very, very successful. Um, so, but that's, you know, something... You know, right now I have some great pieces of music, but it's still unsafe for me to fly Joel in from New York, Reb in from Pittsburgh. You know, it's Michele, my keyboard plays in Italy, for God's sake. So yeah. I've never recorded remotely. Have I? I don't think we've ever done that. It's um, tricky. It's not exactly organic. Hoping, oh, God. Well, I'm hoping I can get the guys in later in the year. It seems to be calming down over here with more people uh getting the vaccination which is yeah. you know that that's i mean i can't go out if there's a risk to any member of my audience any member of my crew or my band i, I just can't do that you know um so the people who made wearing a mask a political issue are just so there's a special place it's a nice little satan's portal awaiting there because yeah. it's a health it's a health issue and it, it yeah. always has been regardless of where it came from this is the cards we've been dealt and this is the hand we have to play you yeah. know so let's see now we, we seem to be having over here at least some responsible adults in responsible situations so i'm hoping maybe i can get the guys in you know a month or two and we can do my white snake christmas trilogy for next year <laughs> you know? i've got a, three great songs you know my son had to spend christmas in uh in hospital uh, bless his heart so we celebrated christmas a couple of weeks afterwards when he got out but it, it inspired me to write some beautiful sentimental like you know christmas ain't the same without you here you know yeah. that's that jasper that's jazz sir jasper yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um my daughter's a baroness not bad for a yorkshire lad um, wow. And my grandson is a baron in Germany. Uh, yeah, well, it's, really are uh, it's nice <laughs> filled with, filled with yeah. Actually, the her husband's family trees go back to some Count von whatever the hell marrying some Yorkshire aristocrats. You know, back in the thirties, and the cuttings from the Yorkshire Post are still in evidence. It's quite <laughs> wow. Amazing. I was with Yorkshire. It's just taking over the world, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm still a bit sore that we lost the War of the Roses, though. I can't, leave, I can't let that one go. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I, did we actually lose? I don't we know. Did. Yeah, know. we did. Not according to the f tea, mate. <laughs> War well, of the Roses. You are a true anyway. testament to longevity. I mean, it, it, honestly, you really are in terms of reinventing yourself, whether it be image, material, um, stylistically. I mean, you, you really have moved with the times and it's a testament to you. And and I guess you're in a belief and you're in a vision because I think probably only the Wilson sisters in heart and Chris Squire of Yes have probably gone through more musicians. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. yeah. I have a revolving door. It was, yeah. you know, we, in the early days with the band, we'd all be all sniggering when Rainbow would be, you know, <laughs> flying left, right and center. That was never really the plan. Um, but the circumstances, you know, I do have a clear vision of where I want to go. I invite people in who I feel can help take Whitesnake further, can indeed help them grow more, hopefully learn from me. I can learn from them, a mutual exchange. But some birds tend to sh in their own nest and, you know, I'd rather <laughs> encourage them to spread the wings and fly. Um, so I, I'm not interested in soap operas. I'm not interested in dramas. There's enough to deal with in a band and uh, enough to deal with on the road. And I've got amazing guys, mature guys who are superb musicians, uh, live and in the studio and great singers too. Yeah. I think there's probably a bit of mythology with you because, you know, the idea that, oh, you go through musicians, you must be difficult. But in fairness, just about everyone I've spoken to has worked with you. Doug's been lovely about you. Bernie could be related to you. I mean, everyone's been really nice. This is interesting for such a, a challenging reputation at times, the amount of people who, when people hear that there's a vacancy in Whitesnake, that there's, you know, you'd be surprised who, who volunteer their work. It's uh, yeah. very <laughs> complimentary, I think, or whatever. And we treat people like human beings. It's no, it's a band, you know, and uh, you've got, Joel, and who is just a, an extraordinary 
as I call him, in the incendiary Joel Hogstra. You know, you got the screaming fury rock of, of uh, Red Beach, Michael Devins kicking ass, Michaeli Loopy's like, he's decorated as a partner, like the White Snake 87 album. I mean, <laughs> come on. And then he gets the gig, you know, and, and he's a great he's a vocal coach. So he gives us all vocal warm ups before the shows and stuff. And of course, driven by the inimitable, ageless Tommy Aldrich. You know, yeah. it's it's a uh, enviable standing in front of these guys when they're in full flight is an extraordinarily inspiring and motivating experience. Yeah, I thought the uh, the remastering of the the rock. I can't remember what the title was. It was about a year ago. There was some remastering, and there was um, show oh, me the rock out the trilogy. Yeah, I mean that. Yeah. show me how to win your love. Oh, I mean that. I mean it was subtle, but I mean it's just honestly the it's good work. Well done, sir. Fine work. Thank you, Danny. Well, the thing is that we're doing this so long, we always use the best technology of that particular time. Crank handle, Rolling Stones truck, you know, yeah. eight track or whatever the hell we did burn on. Um, and the mastering has changed and come a million miles since that time. So I'm a frustrated DJ. I've always put, you know, the moment Sony and Philips came together with that uh, Walkman and the uh, cassette, I was making mixtapes, you know, for shagging, <laughs> for pre-show, apres-show, <laughs> unwinding, you know, me meditation music, all of these things. Um, and, uh, but they, I could never put a white snake best of together because they were all so different in terms of tones. So in order to keep, because to some people like Holy Relic, so that's why when we do the box sets, we remaster the original. You know, so there's a, in, a, with a fantastic guy called Scott Hull in New York, very simpatico, big fan. And then we do the new mix. So you've, you know, if you don't like the new mix, you've still got the old one to, yeah. to favor, yeah. you know, but I, I love it. And really uh, working with Rhino and Warners uh, has been so supportive because they, when we were doing the deal, I said, well, this is my vision. I'm going to revisit my catalog, remix it, you know, and I want to put three teaser albums together to show you a taste of what's coming, which is what the Red, White and Blues trilogy was. Yeah. And, and it did extraordinarily well. And now we're coming in with the first project from that, which will be the 25th anniversary of Restless Heart. And it kicks ass, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you are more than deserving of this Rocks Honours Award. Like oh, bless your heart. When I've knocked it together, we'll, we'll get it out to you because that's... <laughs> oh, it's a home project. Lovely. <laughs> I can't wait to put it up there with my Oscar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sit beneath the... I said it'll make a nice door. No, the, the funniest, we've got one next to my piano in the, my office and it's uh, the, the, one of the first awards I got from... Remember, was it Metal Hammer? Yeah, it's still a going. fucking horrible little hammer on a piece of <laughs> brown fabric. And of yeah. course, with, through two divorces, it's followed me around and I was hanging, <laughs> hanging with pride over the Kurzweil. You know, Can't give it away. <laughs> a silver and silver and hammer. Can't give it away. No, no, no. no. Oh, well, I'm looking forward to seeing more of your... Hi, this is David Coverdale with picture postcards from the road. <laughs> video postcards from the road. Video postcards, sorry, video postcards from the road, darling. Yeah. Right. Very pleasant. Very lovely to make your acquaintance. Thank you, you so too. much. And to your listeners, and uh, send my love. And God willing, we'll meet next year. Planet Rock. Planet Rock.